Look around, folks. Our politics have become less about governing and more about winning. It's like a reality show where the loudest, most outrageous contestant gets the most airtime. We're so busy cheering for our team, we've forgotten the whole point of the game to make our lives better. This isn't about red or blue anymore. It's about the purple we're all turning from holding our breath, waiting for common sense to prevail. Remember when we used to debate ideas, not just hurl insults? Now it's all about who can throw the most mud, who can dig up the most dirt. We've turned our political system into a circus where the clowns are running the show and the audience is left wondering what the hell happened. This ain't the greatest show on earth, folks. It's the greatest threat to our democracy. Imagine George Washington at a political rally, rocking a Make America Great Again hat. Doesn't quite fit, does it? That's because the Founding Fathers, despite their many flaws, understood that blind partisanship was a recipe for disaster. They envisioned a government where ideas, not party lines, reigned supreme. They knew that a nation divided against itself couldn't stand, and they certainly didn't anticipate the political circus we see today. They believed in robust debate, in challenging ideas, in finding solutions that benefited the entire nation, not just one faction or party. They envisioned a system where elected officials would rise above party politics and prioritize the needs of the people. They understood that true leadership meant putting the country first, even if it meant going against your own party's interests. But somewhere along the way, we lost sight of that vision. We've allowed political parties to become more powerful than the people they're supposed to represent. We've become so entrenched in our own political tribes that we've forgotten what it means to be Americans first and partisans second. We've allowed our political system to become a game of winners and losers, where compromise is seen as weakness and bipartisanship is a dirty word. The Founding Fathers wouldn't recognize the political landscape we inhabit today. They'd be appalled by the level of animosity, the lack of civility, the sheer absurdity of it all. They'd shake their powdered wigs in disbelief and wonder how we managed to stray so far from their vision. It's time we stopped playing political games and started honoring their legacy by building a government that works for all Americans, not just those who wear the right color tie. It's time for some real talk, folks. Our two-party system, the one with the donkey and the elephant, has become more like a wrestling match in a mud pit. We've got two sides, both covered in muck, slinging mud at each other and making a whole lot of noise, but not getting much done. It's entertaining, sure, but it's also incredibly unproductive and downright embarrassing. We've got folks on the left screaming about socialism, while those on the right shout about tyranny. Meanwhile, the average American is stuck in the middle, trying to dodge the mudslinging and figure out how to pay their bills. It's a political circus where the clowns are running the show and the audience is left wondering what the hell just happened. The truth is both sides are guilty of playing this game. We've got politicians who care more about scoring points than solving problems, who'd rather tweet a snarky insult than sit down and find common ground. They're like kids in a sandbox, fighting over the same damn toys while the world burns around them. It's time to break free from this two-party trap. We need to stop treating politics like a team sport and start focusing on the issues that matter to all Americans. We need to demand more from our leaders, not just blind loyalty to a party, but a genuine commitment to serving the people. It's time to clean up this mud pit and start building a political system that works for everyone, not just the elephants and donkeys. So how do we fix this mess? Well, buckle up, folks, because I'm about to throw a radical idea your way, non-partisan leadership for key political positions. That's right, I'm talking about stripping away the party affiliations from some of the most powerful positions in government. Imagine a world where the Attorney General, the Supreme Court Justices, even the Speaker of the House, are bound by their oaths to the Constitution, not to a political party. Think about it. An Attorney General who's not beholden to a party agenda, who can pursue justice without fear or favor. A Supreme Court that interprets the law based on its merits, not on partisan leanings. A Speaker of the House who prioritizes the needs of the nation over the demands of their party. It sounds crazy, right? But maybe, just maybe, it's the kind of crazy we need right now. Now I know what you're thinking. Trevor, you've lost it. 
That's never gonna happen. And you're probably right. The political establishment, the folks who benefit from the current system, they'll fight tooth and nail to keep their grip on power. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. We need to start demanding better from our leaders. We need to push for reforms that prioritise the people over the parties. This isn't about creating a utopia where everyone agrees all the time. It's about creating a system where disagreement is healthy, where debate is encouraged, where solutions are found through collaboration, not through partisan warfare. It's about building a government that's accountable to the people, not to the parties. It's about reclaiming our democracy from the grips of hyper-partisanship. We're at a crossroads, America. We can continue down this path of hyper-partisanship, where the loudest voices drown out reason, where political gamesmanship trumps progress, and where our democracy slowly crumbles under the weight of division. Or we can choose a different path. A path where we prioritize unity over division, where we demand more from our leaders, where we fight for a system that works for all Americans, not just the select few. The clock is ticking, folks. The longer we wait, the harder it will be to break free from this cycle of hyper-partisanship. We need to act now before it's too late, before our democracy becomes another casualty of our own making. We need to demand better from our leaders. We need to hold them accountable for their actions. And we need to push for reforms that prioritize the needs of the people over the interests of the parties. This isn't about being a Democrat or a Republican. It's about being an American. It's about remembering that we're all in this together, that we share a common destiny, and that our future depends on our ability to find common ground. It's about recognizing that our differences, while real, shouldn't define us, that our shared humanity should bind us together in a common purpose. It's time to rise above the partisan fray, to reject the politics of division, and to embrace a future where we work together to build a more perfect union. Our democracy depends on it.